Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations. Today I'm going to show you how you make this coffee table with some cool arrow art on top. Let's do it. The material list for this project is a little long, so I have provided a full list of materials for this project down in the description for you to check out. Firstly, I marked the middle of the plywood board. This will be my reference when I'm gluing my pieces of wood down. Now you can do any pattern you like. I decided to go with an arrow design on top. I oversized all the cuts as I would come back later with a circular saw to cut everything to its final length. All the cuts for the tabletop have a 45 degree cut on one end of each piece of timber. I cut the arrow section first and clamped this into place. I took my time to ensure the boards were exactly in the right spot as every piece of wood would reference off the first one. I then rough measured and cut the rest of the pieces. With everything now cut, I could start to glue up, again taking my time to ensure the arrows were in the right position before clamping down. Once these were right, it was just a matter of spreading the glue on the rest of the plywood, and then laying the boards in position. I found spreading the glue over the plywood easier than applying the glue to each piece of timber. I then found everything that was heavy in my shop, which was mostly paint tins, and put them on top of the table. With the tabletop drying, I could turn my attention to the table legs. I first cut the square section of legs. I made two squares with the outer side of the square measuring 400mm and the top and bottom of the square measuring 350mm. I used pocket holes to join these together, but you could always just glue and screw these. The main thing to remember is to take your time to ensure everything is level and lining up. This will ensure your table doesn't rock at the end. I put the pocket holes on the top and bottom pieces, this way the top ones won't be seen as it'll be glued to the tabletop, and the pocket holes on the bottom can be plugged which I'll show you later on. With the two squares now constructed, I clamped them together and sanded them. Clamping and sanding together ensures everything stays the same size and at the same level. This will ensure the table remains level. I then made the triangle section of the leg. This was made up of two pieces cut to 385mm. I rough cut these to length and snuck up on the cut for the right fit. Each end of the triangle sections has a 30 degree cut. Once these were cut to the right length, I glued them into place. then it was time for the stretcher. I drew a line at the centre of the square part of the leg and the centre of the stretcher. Then I glued and screwed them into place, just lining the lines up. Once the legs had dried, I could come back and reinforce the joints with dowels. When drilling into dress timber, it is always best to put some blue tape down. This will help with tear out. With the holes drilled, I hammered in the dowels and then flush cut them with a saw. With the legs now assembled, I could take the tabletop out of clamps. I had a couple of small gaps in between the wood pieces which needed to be filled. A little trick for you. Run a bead of glue down the joint and get some sawdust from around your mitre saw and rub the sawdust in with the glue. It'll fill the joint and blend in. No one will ever notice. I then trimmed the tabletop to its final length. I did this with a circular saw and using a door board or a circular saw cutting jig to make the cuts. The doorboard jig is a great jig for the workshop and makes cutting straight lines a breeze. Nick Ferry has a great video on how to make one. I'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out. I made my way around the board, making sure that each cut was straight and square. I then could start the job of sanding. A belt sander would have been really handy, but like always in woodworking, we use what we have. So I used my orbital sander. Got the job done. I sanded everything flat and up to 220 grit. I then started to cut my frame for the tabletop. I used mitre joints here. It is best to rough cut to length and then sneak up on the cut as it is hard to measure and get it right the first time. I started with one side and when that was correct, I clamped it into place and made my way around the board. Once all the sides were cut, I glued and nailed them into place. I then came back and puttied up all the nail holes with wood putty. I then sanded and painted the table legs. I undercoated and applied two coats of paint. I used Dulux White on White Low Sheen for this. It was then time for me to tape off and paint the arrows. I took my time to ensure the tape was perfect. 
I then, like always when I'm painting two colours next to each other, I score the line with my knife. This will help the colours not bleeding when painting. I always paint the lighter colour first and then move to the darker one. The white arrow is Dulux White on White and the black is Dulux Theatre Flat Black paint. Once the white arrow is dry, I can remove the tape and re-tape for the black arrow. With the arrows painted, it was time to remove the tape and see the big reveal. I then taped up the frame and painted that white. With the frame dried, I applied a couple of coats of clear min wax polyacrylic to the whole tabletop. I then flipped the tabletop over and painted the underside white also. This step is optional as you won't see it when it's done, but I like the project to be completely finished. Another little trick for you, if you are going to paint a couple of coats of the same colour, wrap your paintbrush up in Glad Wrap. This will stop it from drying out between coats and save you washing your brushes and rollers a million times. With the tabletop drying, I could drill the holes in the table legs which would be used to join the top to the bottom. I measured equal distance from each side and along the stretcher. I then used a 3 8 inch Forstner bit and drilled the depth of the bit which will conceal the screws. Now there are many ways that you can plug pocket holes. Brad Rodriguez from Fix This Build That has a great video on testing all the common methods for plugging pocket holes. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. I use the dowel method. I round it off one end of the dowel on the disc sander. This will help the dowel go in easier. Once the glue has dried, you can come back and flush cut them. It was now time to attach the base to the top. I made sure the base was centered to the tabletop and then I screwed it down. Now I can flip and check out my hard work. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and if you like this video be sure to hit those subscribe and like buttons so you don't miss out on my next video.